My name is Cedar. Is that an internet name? Probably. But I found a guidebook full of trail maps that encompasses about 55 miles or 80 kilometers of trails. And I'm going to try and hike the entire thing in one weekend from a couch start. I started the journey by traveling over to Dead Horse Point State Park and heading through all this beautiful fog. It's just about dawn at the very beginning. Uh, today is Friday. I'm in Dead Horse Point State Park. The first trail that I'm doing is the One Mile Loop Trail. I'm just waiting for the sun to crack over the horizon so I can start my timing then. You might be able to see just a little bit. Got some frosted over juniper berries. Very reflective. Well, I suppose there ain't nothing left to it but to do it. Here we go. I had to come back and get the camera. As the sun kept rising, I kept on running through the national park. It felt good to have the expanse of an icy slick rock vistas all to myself. It's a little frosty. This place is like Disneyland to me, and I was happy to not have to share it. Except for with this cottontail, of course. The loose sand spun underneath my trail runners as I wound through butte after beautiful butte. Like this one, named Aztec Butte after the early colonizers thought these ruins were Aztec in origin. That, and it looks like Mexico's Temple of the Sun. We also have whale rock, shaped like... well, you get it. I've turned on the widest lens on my camera so that you can see both of these amazing structures. And while I tell you a little bit about them, I want you to take a moment and think about what you think their function is. And while you're doing that, take a look behind me at an ancient hallway. How cool is that? It's just amazing. These two structures were built by the Fremont people who inhabited central Utah somewhere between 700 and 2,000 years ago. It could have been for that entire time period or it could have been for a fraction of it. We're not entirely sure. But they were semi-nomadic people, which means that they spent some of their time hunting and gathering and they spent some of it farming. And they practiced a special and rare type of farming called incipient farming. And that involved planting your seeds in places that would stay moist. This might include the edges of a creek bed that is routinely wet but doesn't flood very often, or perhaps some sandy soil in the shade in an alcove on the side of a cliff. And speaking of that, the fact that these two structures survived, these are original by the way, these aren't restored by the Park Service, this is the original condition. The fact that they're still surviving is just a testament to how dry and petrifying this desert landscape can be though there are some parts missing to these. There were doors, or vault doors, seals, whatever you want to call them, over these two openings. Now that I've said that, you might have a better idea of what they are. I'll tell you now. They were granaries, and they were used to store food, tools, farming tools, hunting tools, and also seeds for the next season. Because they were semi-nomadic people, the Fremont spent much of their time out in the field. And so when you returned from the field, you would want to make sure that you have food. So they would save these seeds, not only to plant, but to eat. It's kind of like doing meal prep at the beginning of a work week so that you don't have to continually cook every single day. And you know that if when you get home from an exhausting day, you know that food is ready for you. And it's just crazy to me that that mindset has been inside the human psyche for so long. But over these holes would be giant stones with uh, mud used to seal as well as to seal all of these cracks and there were probably some more stones that used to be here too and that provided two main purposes 
number one, to camouflage these caches from passing humans that might be following the trails below. Because remember, we didn't have highways. All we had were very advanced trail systems that everybody followed, which essentially is a highway that a car can't drive on. Uh, and additionally, using that mud to seal on these doors ensured that the seeds slash your food, because it was probably the same thing, uh, would stay fresh for longer. Now we can't responsibly enter these, but if we look from a distance, it's still just so easy to appreciate these echoes of our past. Somebody sat here, somebody scrambled through, crouched their back, scraped their skin on this roof. Somebody put their hands on this mud to push it up there. Okay, back to it. Welcome to Upheaval Dome. There's two different overlooks here. The further one is about three clicks past the first one. So we're gonna go for that, but it's kind of a source of controversy as to what the actual Upheaval Dome is. Personally, I'm going with the theory that it's an impact site from a meteor that petrified rock. But you take a look be a judge yourself whether or not it's that possibly a salt dome or a giant dump left over from a dinosaur that's where we're going so you can see the green Inside the gypsum is caused by copper oxide. Down there you can see kind of an impact spot. Like upheaved, kind of a dome, upheaval dome. You want to see the world's smallest arch? As resilient as they are, desert ecosystems are also incredibly fragile. All around me, I continued to find trash and footprints off trail on courses that seem to be incredibly isolated. Crustbuster. Crustbuster. Welcome to the Island in the Sky, the most popular and most visited section of Canyonlands National Park. I've come about two miles past the end of the trail that I was following for the guidebook to show you something very special. My favorite view in this park, in all of the Utah parks actually, and one of the best views I've found in my entire life. I think it's better than the Grand Canyon. You ready? What we're looking at down there is the White Rim. That's the old mining road that you see carved out there. It's now a tour route, but below that is Wingate Sandstone. It's about a 6,000 foot vertical drop, over one vertical mile straight down. So this is definitely not a ledge that you want to get any closer to than I am right now. But this drops down into the Needles District of Canyonlands National Park, the second most popular section, much more remote than Island in the Sky. Uh, and then behind us over here, we have the Maze District way out there. That's where most of Edward Abbey's stories took place. And it's also where Butch Cassidy and the Wild Bunch hung out quite a bit. And the reason that this is called the Island in the Sky, by the way, is because it's an isolated ecosystem being over one vertical mile below or above the rest of the park down there it's a completely separate climate zone and so that's the rest of the island in the sky over there we've just hiked out to the edge i'm laying on the morrison formation a late jurassic era riverbed this was probably a sandbar about 150 million years ago and i'm about to tell you about a different kind of ancient ancestor right here is the track of a three-toed theropod or meat-eating dinosaur. You can see the three different toe prints here uh, kind of coming to a sharp point at the tip indicating that it is indeed a theropod. As I mentioned earlier, the Morrison Formation is a bunch of sandstone that used to be sand that was sandbars on the bottom of rivers all during the Jurassic era. In fact, this area that I'm in right now, the Copper Ridge area, is known as the real Jurassic Park. Now I'm going to show you some tracks here. They're a little bit different than the last ones. You can see that they're much, much deeper, and that indicates a much larger animal, which indicates that it might lead a more plant-based diet and less of a predatory lifestyle. So these are most likely from a sauropod. And what's very fascinating about these tracks here, just look how deep those are, is that the animal makes a sharp right turn. 
which in fact, this is the only set of tracks in the world that has such a sharp turn like that. Uh, prior to this, it was thought that these, this, an animal of this size couldn't actually make a turn this sharp. Uh, but the tracks are very close together, indicating that the animal was moving slowly, and so it probably wasn't being pursued. But it is interesting that there are the tracks of a very large predator right over there. You see that smoke over there? That can only mean one thing. Oil. Gotta blend in a little bit more, you know? This whole bed's been raised before, that's why I'm not really concerned about trampling anything. Save the rest of my work here for off camera, Mr. Plain View. We've got <laughs> a uh, tire knocker. Dang, that is lightweight. Uh, and an ice pack and a belt. So somebody was definitely killed here. Before I tell you about these, if you know where I am, awesome. Just be super, super careful and considerate if you do choose to come up here because there are pictographs in the rocks all over the place and if you stand on them, you will ruin them. So watch your step, be super vigilant and super careful. This is an amazing place and I just wanted to stop here as the sun sets. It just went over the canyon walls back there in the valley of Moab. Uh, but if you look at the top right of your screen, that is my top left, up there, you can see some awesome paintings. And those are pretty old, maybe 2,000 years old, maybe older. Uh, but that is called the Barrier Canyon style. That's not originally what they looked like. It's not even what they looked like 40 years ago because some freaking full vandals vandalized it. They, it's called a desecration when that happens. They completely scratched it off the rock. So this is a rework of what it originally looked like based off of photos. The Park Service redid this. but. We can also see some etched in pictographs down here, which means that there are two different groups of people here uh, at different times. And what's fascinating about that is that these kind of interactions where you see two different types like that occur most often at crossroads. And what's going on here is that we're at the junction of a canyon and the Colorado River, which is uh, a junction in the old world, like those highways that we discussed earlier. Uh, but I just wanted to stop here and reflect for a moment. I'm tackling one of the national parks tonight, Arches, the other one, and I'm just gonna try and blaze through it. I'm really not feeling as miserable as I thought I would feel at this point. I'm feeling good and I think I'm gonna feel even better after chowing down on this pasta. When it's quiet, it's easy to think and I'm just so incredibly grateful and privileged to be able to take this trip and to live in such a place that I live in. It's, it's a complete blessing. It really is. I feel like I've seen millennia of history today, more history than some people will get to experience in their entire lives. And I am just so beyond grateful for that. <laughs> it's, there's nothing else to say. As I hiked out of a canyon, a small sedan pulled up. Hi, yeah, totally. What's up? Can you actually see anything out there? Oh, yeah. With like a flashlight? Yeah, what are you looking for? I mean, we were just gonna. Oh my god, there's a big ass dog right there. Okay, um, <laughs> we're from Colorado. Oh, and right on. We were trying to drive through, but the flight didn't get in until noon, so obviously we're a little late. Yeah. Um, <laughs> should we like stay the night in our car and just wake up early or something? What is even happening? I just met two strangers from Colorado and Arizona and now I'm guiding them on Delicate. This, <laughs> I've been working very hard to take as many opportunities as I can and it is crazy how many come your way when you keep showing up at the table. 
And just like that, I made two new friends. We hiked delicate together. They went on their way, and I continued hiking on into the night as it got colder and colder. I feel like I'm chasing ghosts. In a way, I guess I am. I like running without the light on. Tonight, I'm not even a shadow. Not even from the stars. creature of the night. This here is the Moenkopi layer of sandstone. You can tell because of the way it is. That's a rock fact for you. This yerba mate that I'm brewing with the soda can penny stove that I made, I believe that if you brew it with the intention of giving you energy, it has much more power than any store-bought wood, than any can of yerba mate or iced coffee wood. Don't expect him to, but I hope that the good Lord forgives me for what I'm about to do. It's nine degrees Fahrenheit, and we've got a ford, a creek. I've engaged the Chacos into sport mode. <laughs> I was in high hopes before. In a good mood. But this may genuinely break me. Ugh. Echoes. You might look at that sign and wonder where Turret Arch is. Which direction is it? There's Skyline Arch right up there. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh. <clears throat> Ain't that just the way? Hey, hi pup. I'm crying, not because I'm frustrated or because I'm sad, but it's just overwhelming sometimes. I think, well, really what I think is that I'm in love. It's just so much pure beauty in every single direction. It's indescribable, really. <laughs> The next morning I met up with my good friend Max, who is a stately gentleman and a very skilled drone pilot. These sandstone towers have always drawn an eerie parallel to New York City for me. 
except I'm much happier to be out here. Running in sand is one thing, and running in loose snow is another. Combine these and you've got a recipe for some burning calves. But I've only got 10 more miles to go and 3 more ecosystems to visit. I want to finish by dusk today. Hey look, it's me. A theme that I'm continually brought back to. As much as I love disappearing into the dark and becoming a creature of the night, a phantom, I would be lying if I denied that outright expression was just as much a part of it than anything else. This is it, the human experience. To feel the echoes of our past flowing through us. To sweat, to fear, to feel, to hurt, to bleed, to fall, and to fall in love. And to feel energy, nutrition, water, spite, love, and sheer willpower coursing through every vein in your body, metabolizing to become who you are. As precious and as fragile as these landscapes are, sometimes it is essential to the human experience to throw your arms in the air in triumph and just scream. And to become yourself an echo. Well, one week later, and I'm not even sore anymore. I think it's time to retire this guy back to the old shelf for a little while. This video wasn't sponsored by Falcon Guides, but Mr. Green, you wrote this one, and I do have to say that you did a very, very good job because it was accurate, and this thing pulled me out of a couple tight spots, especially when it started snowing at night. It can get easy to get lost out here. Uh, but I want to thank my friend Max who filmed that UAV footage for me. It came out phenomenally and then the piece would not be the same without that footage. So thank you buddy. And I also want to thank you. I, my videos can be long-winded and you know that if you're a returning viewer. So I actually had to cut out a ton of content for this. There's another chapter coming out. It's part two but it's actually just like a separate video thing. It'll come out in a few days. It's called Ex Datura because it was supposed to be Chapter 10 in Moonflower Canyon and Datura is the proper name for a moonflower. So you can check that out in a few days if you want to see even more content uh, and a little bit of behind the scenes stuff from this episode. But uh, until then, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. We're still just starting out on YouTube again and uh, there's 27 subscribers right now. Uh, as I'm making this video and that is such a cool feeling to have that kind of family even if it's just an internet family uh, but you too can join our ever-growing community of sustainability and outdoor enthusiasts uh, and consider putting a thumbs up down there as well if you like this video because that really helps me know what kind of content y'all want to see um, so anyway thank you so much for making it to the end of this long long video I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you in future videos but in the meantime, go outside, go on all trails, pick up a guidebook and check out what is around you because there is so, so much out there and it's just waiting for you. So remember to stay hungry and I'll see you later.